as you might be aware, I actually run two RPG campaigns, one in a fantasy setting called using the rule set of Mithras, and the second one in a science fiction setting using the rule set M space. We've two campaigns to run. I've always been looking for one place to store all my notes, campaign information, encounters and plot lines. Well, in this video, I am going to show you how I create my adventures on a website called World Anvil. And in doing so, Everything that I um, put on there is instantly accessible for both myself, the players and subscribers. And do stay watching right the way to the end of this video because I'm going to give you a sneaky peek at some of my campaign content. My name's Inwills and welcome to the In Crowd. <laughs> So before I actually show you the creation process, I need to be upfront and let you know that I do have a paid account for World Anvil. I pay for this with my own money and it's, this is not part of a paid video and I'm not sponsored by World Anvil in any way. I just wanted to get that clear and up at the front so everybody is aware. Although, if you are watching the world anvil you've got my email and while we're confessing things and actually being upfront and honest this is probably also a good time to say that i actually changed my mind about world anvil there was a time that i did not rate it at all and i even wrote a blog post saying that i really didn't need world anvil at all however since then i have changed my mind completely about the site and in fact i even made a video about why i could and live without it now well that's probably a bit of an exaggeration but you get the idea and if you would like to watch that video then I'll put it somewhere around here so I haven't done anything clever with this video you're probably thinking in wills you never do anything clever but what i'm going to do rather than record all the separate parts and then try to put them together i'm just going to do it live for the video record it first time with me in a little box and world anvil taking up the screen so there might be a few little mistakes but i know you understand okay let's get on with this so hello welcome this is inside world anvil and just to start off with i need to say that obviously i'm not in my actual campaign worlds at the moment if i did that then you would see a whole load of information but one of the nice things about world anvil is that you can have more than one world so if i use my drop down um, menu here you can see that voltage is 427 is the sci-fi world and Mithras is just the fantasy setting but I'm in one that I made up for Shadowrun but never did anything with it and it's called it well it is called Metro City so I thought I would use this to demonstrate the software okay then so the first thing is that I always start off in my articles and this is just a personal preference and I have to say I this is how I do it there might be a much better way or a different way but this is how I've got into the routine of creating my sessions and um, just so you know I've created two um articles already um one here called milo or milo who's a person and metro city here who's a location and i've also used this uh, create a new category and um, called one plot so if i create a new one called um locations you can then see that i can just 
take this Metro City, left click and drag it onto there. And then I can make another one called NPCs, Let's put a little S on there and slide Milo into that. So you can see that that's quite easy. So we've got one here about plots and I haven't created a plot line at all. So I'm going to go through how I would do it. So I've just shrunk the uh, capture bit uh, a little bit because after I did the first bit, I told you this was not going to be super slick. Anyway, I shrink, shrunk it down a bit because I needed to see this plus key here down at the bottom right hand corner so when I go to start making my adventure I come down to this plus key here and I press the green hammer and that allows me to choose a variety of templates for the article and as you can see there's one here called plot and so I click on that and that starts off my plot my first plot so the first thing I do is that I call it the the name of the series of adventures and this is going to be an overview so if you're watching the sci-fi campaign at the moment it's called it's a bug hunt and so I'm just going to um, use that it's a bug hunt that's what we're going to do and then in this box we're going to do we're going to write the overview this is going to be the overview of the whole adventure so I've set it up that it comes out in code. I find it easier to type with the um, almost like the um, HTML tags rather than anything else. So I'm quite used to that. So but there is a plain text version as well. So here I would press H2 and type in overview. OK, and then what I would do next is write out an overview of the actual adventure. Um, this will start when the party have rested and spent their experience roles so forth and so on um i do have the option up here to have lists uh, first second third fourth and fifth um how i normally do it is that i normally just use a h3 tag a headline three tag here and sort of like put first this will happen second etc etc um up here we have up at the top right we have some important sort of like options um i always make sure my adventures are private and work in progress um or progress but i publish them and they need to be published in order to do the linking later on um here you can preview it or view it or you can save changes and because this is private here you can add a group to it so in my sci-fi campaign or my mithras campaign i have the players in um, linked up within world anvil as a player group so if it's a piece of information or some rule sets that i want to share with them then i make it applicable or visual to the players themselves i also via my patreon page have subscribers subscribers that can see the adventure notes after and these are members of the red order and higher so i have a a group a subscriber group for them as well and so after the session i can just allow them to have a look so this is basically my overview and that's how i start the adventure so it gets gives some ideas and just to let you know you can come back and um, change this anytime you want so i'm just going to um, save that and if we go back to the articles then you can see here it is it's a bug hunt um, that's a plot notice uh, metros these are recently updated articles so you can see metro in low it's a location so that's a style of article um, a template just like the first one is a plot and then this one here is in milo's a person 
template and it's in NPCs. So what we're going to do, first of all, we're just going to drag this into the plot and then that's it. It's there and ready to start creating. Okay then, so the next thing I do is that I come down and I create another plot template. And I always, I have a certain way that I label these. So I always start off by saying one dot space. And then um, you, I create a title for the first bit. So for example, um, this first one might be meeting the Patreon or whatever, or meeting the Mr. Johnston or meeting um, Benny, the party's fixer. Okay, so I just give it a title and then here I write the contents of the actual um, adventure um, of that encounter and I go down and I'm just sort of like writing rubbish here but you can see that I go down and fill in all the important bits. Now at this point before I go any further there's various things I can do. So here with the sections you can see there's a variety of sections and I can put in here these appear at the top of the article to the right when I'm viewing it. So what I tend to put in here are things that I need to remember. So it might be an important dice roll, um, perception checks at hard to see the trap, so forth and so on. And so I can add things to there that I need to remember. There's also headers and footers, but I tend not to use them. The next place I go to is this idea of this navigation and this is how I link everything together. So the first thing that I do is that I look at the parent article, okay, and I call that, if you remember the first overview that I created, all these plot lines are going to live in that, um, in that overview. So the parent article I'm going to say it's a bug hunt so I know it's going to go to there and then the next thing I've got is this option to have a position or weight um, whereabouts will it actually occur within that article now you can see up at the top that I started off by calling this one and what I do now is that I think of um, a number like 10,000 say or 20,000 and I deduct the one from it and give it the weighting. So this weighting will be 9,000. If it's number two, it'll have 8,000 and so it will sit below each one of these. So World Anvil doesn't sort of like take the number from the um, plot title and order them you have to use the weighting here well that's what I do in any case and I can quite easily remember it because if this is number one then it's 9,000 I normally have about 10 plots but I mean 10 articles within the plot but if you had more then start at 20,000 now the next thing I do which is really important for me is that I come over, that's the basic navigation and I come over to the linear navigation and what I do here you have a choice. You've got the previous article and the next article. Now there isn't a previous article for this. Um, the overview is always there. That's the sort of like encapsulating article but there will be a next article and I'll show you this and there's a really good link here that sort of like says create new article and link it so what I do is that I click there I call this number two okay first encounter 
selector out is and it says select template and I select the plot and I create and link it. Okay, so that's all done now. So I can actually make sure it's published, make sure it's private and save it. Okay, so if I go back to my articles now, you can see here's my plot. Here's my main plot. And can you see within there is the first article that we created. Now notice that this article is the second one that we've made, but it's not within this at the moment. So what I would do is press this spanner to edit the article. Um, it was red. I don't know if you noticed that. Just let me go back. It's red because it's not published. It's in draft. So I just go to the spanner. Here it is again. And I let's publish it, but make it private. I tend to do that straight away. And say, for example, this is, oh no, they have weapons. And you just type in whatever you want there. Now I'm going to go to navigation again. Parent choice is going to be it's a bug hunt because that's going to put them all in that area. And then linear navigation, what I'm going to do, I'm going to link it to the previous article. So this is number two. So it's going to be linked to the one before it. it's going to be number one. And then I'm going to link it to number three. Um, I don't know, danger time or something like that. And I'm going to select the type of template. It's going to be a plot and I'm going to create a link. Now, the only thing that I forgot to do, if you remember back here in the basic navigation, we've got it's a bug hunt and I have to put the weighting. So this is number two. So I know this article has to have a weighting of 8000 and I'm going to save changes. And if I go back to my article, you can now see this is embedded in that one because this one has 9,000 rating. This one has 8,000. And you can see now that I, it's asking for, you know, the danger time um, to be done. So let me just um, quickly do that. So bug hunt and it's going to, it's number three. So this is 7,000. And linear, the one before it is going to be that one. And we'll just leave it like that for the time being. So if I go back, you can now see that I've got all these nested in one after another. Now, the important thing is, is that if I click view article, here it's a bug hunt. So here's the information. And I've chosen this style because it was, it reminded me of Shadowrun. But notice because each of these, I'll just move it up a bit. Notice that because each of these are embedded in this overview, you can click straight to them. So I can click to meeting Benny. And if I go down here, can you see this is where the right hand side was and notice that it's saying the one before it it's it's a bug hunt and the one after it is the first encounter so if I press first encounter here's the first encounter I can go backwards one forwards one or actually go up one and to find um, it's a bug hunt. And so if I click on there, I'm back at the beginning and then that's it. So the other thing that I have to say, let me just go back to my dashboard and my articles. What I would do then is that in this plot, notice that it's all going to sit with in there. Now there is one other thing that is really good about World Anvil and if you remember beforehand I'd made two articles Metro City and Milo the person. So I'm just going to go into my first um, encounter so I'm going to edit this article here. The party will meet 
Milo at Metro City. Okay, now what World Anvil can do now, and seriously, this is the reason I use it, is that up here I've got this auto link button, and that's new. That's new. Beforehand, you had to um, use the at sign and then write it. But with this auto link button, what I could do is press it, and it's found two possible links. And if I say replace all, and then save and exit. You can see now in the code, the party will meet Milo at Metro City. Now, the, if I save this, the important thing about this now is when I view this document, can you see that these are linked? Okay, so I can actually use this to go straight to Metro City if I wanted to. Okay, and there's Milo's uh, as well. So they all sort of like link together. Now, I probably haven't explained that very well, but hopefully you, you get the idea. And that's how I create my adventures. So I hope you enjoyed that bit of behind the scenes. I am going to share with you some of the information, a sneaky peek in my Mithras campaign um, at the end of this video, just so you can see it. And usually this is um, only available for um, subscribers. So you'll be able to see how it's all set out, but hopefully you know if you really want to see everything then go along to the patreon page and you know sign up sign up if you have any questions then please do let me know in the comments below and if you would like to see any other way that i actually use world anvil then let me know as well and of course if you have found this video or any of my videos helpful then please consider liking, commenting and subscribing. It really does help both my channel and my dreams. Okay then, let's look at some real life examples. So here we are, we're actually in the ODES campaign, the Mithras world, and this is where all my articles um, live. So you can see here, this is actually um, Cyrus is Summoned, which was the first part in the tackling insanity. If I actually go over to my plots here, you can see that they're all set up. I have separate um, articles and plot lines for each of um, the characters. So this is Cyrus's subplot. Um, this was Hengis when he was with us. This is Bartleby's um, subplot. So they're all there. But over here, say for example, I have um, some organizations and this is what I wanted to um, share with you. So you might be aware that we have some sorcerer orders in Mithras. So here's the order of sorcerers and I'm just going to press view article here and you'll be able to see everything springs into existence. So this is what um, people of the green order and high can see. So notice up here this is the important information. Notice the different style from all the others. Um, so these are my ranks. Um, here's my video embedded about my Mithras rules all about sorcerers. This is the general information about sorcerers. This is what they need to go up each rank in the sorcerers. And then down here, you can see that I've linked up the other um orders. So um, obviously um, Cyrus is an order of the Phoenix, a red order, but thinking back you might remember Gulliver. So let me show you order of the Kraken blue. Then this was linked up here. So notice that I've got an embedded um, picture here and then this is all the organizational information. I do have, if I just go back to the organizations, I'm still sort of like working on these. Um, if I go to the 
order of the phoenix, you can see that because I'm engaging with the order of the phoenix all the time, then this is now filled out. So these are the skills that they need to do for progression, their spells, their ranks, etc., etc. Now, just to let you know, um, it looked a bit um, stretched or something like that on there. Th that is because of my videoing and how I've organized it. It, it looks lovely on the World Anvil site. Yeah, so thank you for sticking to the end. I hope you enjoyed that. And yeah, hopefully I'll, you'll come back soon. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, but most importantly, stay positive. This is the gibbering GM going back to his campaign. See ya. Bye.